Welcome to this lesson in which we will analyze the discharges. We have seen that discharges can be measured using different types of devices. Here we have an example of resulting data, direct discharge measurements at the station of Amé along the Meuse River, taken twice an hour. These are rough data before any validation step. These rough data are useful to follow the river behavior in real time. They have to be validated and corrected if necessary to be used in design applications. We see, for example, here that the particular values are quite low. In fact, below um, the 5% values over the period, the period of analysis, that is 1968 until 2016. This data can be averaged over one day to obtain the daily discharges um, that are, for example, summarized in this table for different stations along Belgian rivers. We can see an example of three daily values for the station of Amé that is here identified as saint neuville The decrease in trend that we can see here it can also be seen here in the three daily discharges. The mean daily flow over the Meuse River at Amé are shown here for the year 2019. We see that we have more important discharges in winter and autumn and low discharges often below 100 cubic meter per second in summer. The daily discharges can be presented like here as tables and from these tables it is possible to calculate mean values either on a monthly basis or on an annual basis. The mean annual discharge is usually calculated on the basis of a civil year as in the previous tables. However, in some cases floods can start at the end of one year as here and continue at the beginning of the next year, as illustrated here for the winter 2017-2018. This might lead to some errors when counting the number of flood events or the characteristic values of a flood event, for instance, the peak discharge. This is acceptable for the comparison between different years, but to describe flood events, it is often preferable to use the concept of hydrological year. For example, from the 1st September to 31 of August of the next civil year. From discharge data, different types of curves can be constructed to perform useful analysis for different purposes. We will now discuss the uh, first the flow mass curve, then the flow duration curves. An example of flow mass curve is given here for a reservoir whose size is to be designed. The measured discharges are presented in a cumulative way, resulting in the blue curve showing the volume of water entering a reservoir. The discharge at a given time is then just the slope of the tangent to this curve. Considering the volume accumulated for each year, we observe that the third year here is rather wet, while the first one here is rather dry. We have much lower volume. The slope of the straight lines here between the beginning and the end of the mass curves for each year represents the mean discharge for these years. The same process can be conducted for the whole period of three years. The slope of the red line is the mean discharge of the three years that is 0.7 cubic meter per second in the pre present case. Such a curve is useful to determine the size of a reservoir aimed, for example, at flow regulation. If the reservoir releases a constant amount of a uh, constant discharge of 0.7 cubic meter per second, the reservoir fills up when the flow mass curve is steeper than the red line. This situation is represented here by the pink zone. And the reservoir empties if the slope is milder, which is represented by the green zone. 
This means that the maximum distance between the blue volume curve and the red line is the volume required for storage of the excess discharge. We can generalize this for the whole period. The storage volume required for a full compensation of discharge excess or deficit can be determined as the volume between the two extreme tangents to the volume curve, parallel to the mean discharge line. In the present case, this volume would be 13 millions of cubic meter in order to fully compensate the floods or droughts and to release a constant discharge all year long. We observe that this volume is smaller than the total volume of each year, even for the driest year that we have here. Let's come to the flow duration curve. This is a method used to represent the daily discharges in a sorted way. Let us consider the measured discharges in 2019 at Amé, along the Meuse River. The maximum daily discharge is 1,051 cubic meter per second on the 15th of March. Instead of the simple, simple sequence of daily discharges, it is often more interesting to rank the discharges from the largest to the smallest value. This is the flow duration curve. If we assume that this ranking can be interpreted in a statistical way, then a point of the curve represents the discharge re reached or exceeded for the corresponding time. Some usual char characteristic discharges are given here. For example, the discharge at point D3M is reached or exceeded 90 days a year approximately, which is approximately 3 months a year. Characteristic discharge and characteristic drought discharges are generally preferred to extreme values that are often measured in bad conditions. So we have here the characteristic flood discharge, just a little bit lower than the absolute maximum discharge, and the characteristic drought discharge, a little bit higher than the absolute minimum discharge that was observed. These characteristic values are typically taken as the 10 days values and as the 355 days values. So a 10 days delay compared to the absolute extreme values Qmax and Qmin. Instead of representing the abscissa in terms of days in a year, another common representation is in terms of percentage of the year. So for example, the median discharge D6M would become Q50, the discharge exceeded 50% of the time. Applied to the 2019 AME data, the dark blue curve is the flow duration curve. Then, percentile curves are often added for comparison. For example, during the observation period from 1996 to 2020, the P90 value here indicates that the discharge corresponding to 30-day exceedance was above this value 10% of the time. And the P10 value here indicates that the discharge was below this value during 10% of the time. The DM3 um, discharge of 2000, 2019 here is just below, so the value is given here, it is just below the median discharge for uh, this for the whole period of analysis, which indicates that this flood was in the normal expected values. If we look at the DM9 value here, so a low flow value, we see that the value of the year 2019 here was rather low just slightly above the 10%, the P10 value, indicating that the drought season was rather severe that year. Flow duration curves are useful, for example, in the design of hydropower plants. We will illustrate this with the example of Vaugry on the Rhône River. We can see here the typical layout of a hydropower plant in a river. The dam regulates the discharge in the river and maintains a higher water level in the upstream reach. Then, 
Part of the discharge is diverted to the power plant and flows through the turbines to produce electrical power. And finally here, a navigation lock allows for the passage of ships transporting goods along the waterway. The flow duration curve for the Rhône is given here. This, this curve here. For low, for low discharges, all the discharge is diverted towards the power plant, while for higher discharges, only part of it is used to produce electricity. The rest just flows through the dam. This site is equipped with four turbines having a 72 megawatt capacity for a discharge of about 400 cubic meters per second each. So the maximum possible discharge through the power plant is about 1,200 cubic meter per second, as can be seen here. This is the maximum value of the diverted flow. The gross head, so this curve here, is the difference in water level between the upstream and downstream reaches. And it is represented here for each discharge of the flow duration curve. We see that the head is more important in low flow conditions here than in flood periods here, which is logical as during floods, the gates of the dam are open to evacuate this discharge, which re reduces the difference in water level. Then as the power is calculated um, as the product of the discharge Q and the head H, we can construct the power curve, this one, and from there estimate the total production that can be expected from the site. And with this, we finish this lesson. See you for the next one.